Hey, I'm Arsene, this is the episode 9 about creating a multiplayer game in Node.js. If you haven't watched the last episodes, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to do is to teach you how to um, get started with MongoDB. So this is a database that we will be using to save the progression of the players and also their account setting and password, stuff like that. So the first thing you want to do is to go to mongodb.org and download MongoDB. So it's really straightforward. You just download the package and install it on your computer. And I will assume in this video that you did manage to do that. If you have questions, um, simply ask them in the um, comment section below. And the link will also be um, in the description. So once you have downloaded MongoDB, um, it should go inside your program file or Somewhere like that, there should be a bin folder and inside the bin there should be two exe. There's the mongo.exe and there's the mongod.exe. So the reason why we have two um, program is because a database kind of acts like a server. So it's a background process. So the database runs all the time and is waiting for queries. Then it receives queries, do calculation and then send back the result. And mongod acts like the server. So it's always running. You should always have your MongoD running in the background. And in order to send queries to it, you will start mongo.exe. So Mongo is the client. You will use Mongo to send queries. You can have multiple mongo.exe running at the same time. It's kind of like having multiple browser, but you can only have one mongod.exe running in the background because that's kind of like the server. So you can only have one server, but multiple clients. It will be more clear when we will actually use it for real. But before getting into that, I want to talk a little bit about how the data is structured in a MongoDB database. So this is how it goes roughly. So there's um, the database. So there's one database that you use. And inside the database, there are multiple collections. And within those collections, there are multiple documents. In MySQL, a collection is called a table. So collection and table is pretty much the same thing. A document and a record is also relatively, well, it's the same thing. And just like a, a real example of this would look something like um, this over here. So we got the database called my game. Inside the database, there are two tables. There's the account table and there's the progress table. And inside account, there are multiple documents. The first one is username Bob password pass, username Bob two password that. And in progress, it could be username, level, and how many the, the quests the player has completed. So yeah, as you can see, MongoDB is pretty straightforward. So now if I want to create that in my database, those are the different commands um, that you will need. So the first thing you will want to do when you get started with a new database is to create it. And it's by using this command. So use and then the name of the database, so for example, use my game. Pretty straightforward. And if it was already existing, it would just do nothing pretty much. Um, then after creating the database, you will want to create a different collection. And in order to create a collection, this is uh, what you do. You do db create collection and then the name of the collections, for example, account and progress. And finally, if you want to add new um, documents, this is how you do it. So you just do add um, db, then the name of the collections, for example, account or progress or stuff like that, insert, and then you put whatever you want to insert. So if you want to insert this, you just put it like that. And it's an object, it's a, a JavaScript object. So quest complete. It, it's pretty straightforward, as you can see. Okay, so now what we are going to do is to create this database with that content, but for real, so with the real thing. So the first thing you want to do is to locate where your MongoD and Mongo.exe are located. And you want to open a command, uh, command prompt and go to that location. And then you simply want to type MongoD, enter, and this will start the server. This is the equivalent of nodeapp.js. So it just starts the server and we cannot really interact with it. It's just a background process. And if we want to interact with it, we need to use mongo.exe. So here I opened another prompt and then I typed mongo and there we are. I'm connecting to the shell. So it's kind of like a browser. Now I can send queries to, to the real database. So the first query we will send is use my game. So this will create a new 
database called my game. The next thing we will do is to create the two collections. So there we go. And then we will insert a bunch of documents. By the way, when you copy something, if you want to paste it here, you right click and this will cop this will paste content. And there we go. So now the database contains those three elements. Okay, actually I just checked and you need to make sure that the command prompt properties are set to quick edit and insert mode if you want to be able to right click. I highly recommend you to do so, it makes life a lot easier. Anyway, um, now that we have added stuff in our, our database, it would be kind of handy to be able to read it. So this is the um, syntax to read a document. So it's DB, the name of the collection, and then a condition. So what, which document you want to find. So it could be, hey, I want to find um, a document that has the username Bob, or a document that has the username Bob to other password pa uh, pass or something like that. So for example, an example would be something like this. So I can't find any document that has Bob as its user. There we go. So it will return this one. So username Bob password pass. So as you can see, it's working. Now sometime in order to get better performance, you want to restrict how much data the database is sending you. Because, um, well, in, in that case, it's a little bit tiny, but let, let's say I do find progression Bob over here. Okay, so it sends me the username, the level, and the quest complete. But let's say I only care about the level. So in, um, one thing I can do is I can add a, a second parameter over here called to retrieve. And I'm going to specify what I want to retrieve from the database. So don't send me the full document. All I want is the level. So you put one level one. So all I want is the level. So if you do this over here, whoops, progress. If you do this over here, it's only going to return the level of the player. There's also a underscore ID, but just don't um, really consider it. So with that command, it's going to say, hey, give me the level of the username Bob in the collection progress. Now, if you want to modify a document, this is how you do it. So it's DB collection. And then you want to put whatever needs to be matched. So I want to update the username Bob, or I want to update everyone that has the password equal to something. And then you create a, an object, you do dollar sign set, and then you put um, the other values. For example, progress update, username Bob, set the level to 99. You can just copy paste and use that model for, for anything. So if I do this over here, it will say matched one, modify one. And if I do a give me the level of Bob, it will return level 99 now because I've modified it. So I guess that's pretty much all you need to know to get started with MongoDB. Obviously, there are a lot of comments. You can check the MongoDB documentation. I will put a link about that. So if you want to increment, if you want to work with arrays, if you want to do um, absurd, that kind of stuff. But this is just the basic. And for our game, this will, this, this will be quite enough. So right now, all our queries are sent from the Mongo um, process, but it's not really handy. What we would like to do is to be able to send requests directly from our server. And this is what I will cover right now. So what you will need to do is to install a library package. Um, so you go to the root of your project, so where your um, apps.js is located, and you want to type uh, npm install mongo.js. So there are multiple libraries um, to handle MongoDB, but I personally use mongo.js. It's by far the, this, the most simple one. So there we go. Okay, so once this is installed, what we want to do at the top of our um, server is to request this library that we have, that we have just installed. So require mongo.js. And then we want to type this over here. So this will create a connection to our database. So you need to put local host, oh, so you need to put the location of your um, database. In our case, um, I don't know if you have noticed, but when we started the server over, over here, it, it told us a hey, waiting for connection on port this over here. So you want to copy that, place it over here. 
slash the name of your database. In our case, it's my game. And after that, you want to specify all the collection that you will need to use. So in our case, we have two, we got the account one and we got the process progress collection. So once this is done, we can put whatever queries um, we want. So it could be something like, I don't know, account insert a, I want to insert a username B with the password B, for example. So if we save that and we, we start our server, server started, then we open um, a Mongo connection, use my game. So we switch and use this and we do a, is there an account, account find username B? And it will say, yes, there is one and its password is BB. So by the, the server was our Node.js server was able to insert something in our database. And this is exactly what we wanted. So yeah, obviously in our case, we don't want to always call this function when the, the server starts. Uh, what we will want to modify for our game to work is is valid password is username taken and add user. So right now we were using like a set timeout with user and, and stuff like that. But now it's gonna change quite a lot. Well, what we want to do to verify if a password is valid is we do a query to the database. So is there, um, try to find um, one entry, so one document that has its username equal to data password and its password equal to data password. There we go. And and that, that's the place where using the, the callback will be very handy because whenever you use a find function, this over here will not return a value. What How you, you access the data is via a callback over here. So this callback all always starts with error and then the result. So the, the result of our query is over here in rest. So if the rest length, actually if the zero, so if we match something, because this is an array, when, when you do a find query, it, it sends you the list of every single document that matched that query. So it can be more than one. So we want to check if there's at least one of them. We could do if the length is greater than zero, then it means there, there has been a match. So we want to, um, to answer true. So we do it like that. And otherwise, otherwise we want to return false like this. There we go. Now is username taken is pretty much the same thing than, than that, except we don't test with the password. We only check if the username is correct. And then finally for the add user, this is how we will do it. So we take that over here, place it there, and instead of a find, it's an update, uh, insert. So we insert inside account, we add this over here. Now there is no result for an insertion. And then we just call CB. Like that. And that's pretty much it. So let's um, test this with the real thing. So now add JS, server started. We go to localhost this. If I do JJJ, JJJ, sign in, it will say unsuccessful. If I do sign up, it will create my account. So if I open the Mongo over here and I do A, hey, is there someone called JJJ? It will say yes and its password is. JJJ. And then if I sign in, I will be able to shoot bullet. And the great thing is that if I close the server and reopen it, it's still going to remember um, JJJ because the database is still running. And even if the database stops running, it's still going to be saved in a file. So I can still log in over there. And if I try to um, sign in with the wrong password, it's going to say unsuccessful. If I try to sign up, it will say unsuccessful because the username is already taken. So everything is working, it's perfect. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation to watch the next episode. See ya.